this is the move of God in the last days. God's voice must be heard. He said, I'm going to give you the words from the prophets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, and you're in, in Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. I show that as the beginning of the third reformation uh, typology. And the ending is Revelation 11, 15. And Revelation 10, 7 says, And the seventh angel sounded, and the mysteries of God were revealed that, sh that were spoken by the prophets. So right now we're in the process yeah, you, of Lord. God sounding forth from heaven, and the prophets are hearing it and speaking and uh, revealing yeah. the mysteries like Paul did about the Gentiles becoming part of the church. Now God's revealing the final things that have to be restored mm -hmm. because the purpose of the third and final reformation is to fulfill yes. everything yet to be fulfilled. Amen. How many has ever heard preaching that Jesus come any minute? Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Any moment? Yes. yes. Absolutely. It's, it's just not in Scripture. <laughs> Jesus said, I come quickly. That was 2,000 years ago. Yes. And, be, and it says things soon to come to pass. But Acts chapter 3, verse 21 says, P Peter said that, verse 18, he said, Jesus fulfilled all messianic prophecies. Then he said in verse 19, there'll be times of refreshing. Then he said in 20, Jesus is coming again. Then in verse 21 says, but he can't come any time until he's held in the heavens until. Everybody say until. Until. Until the restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a third reformation, there must have been a first and a second. The first reformation was to birth the church, establish the church, and bring us from Judaism to Christianity, and the church was birthed and established on doctrine and demonstration and taken to the ends of the earth. That took three or 400 years. Then the church, by 500 AD, had started degenerating into the great falling away, and we have a thousand-year dark age. And some theologians say Jesus can't come to the great falling away. Well, we had a thousand years of it, and he didn't come close to rapturing that church out. Thank God he didn't. But he started in 1500, the second reformation. And the second reformation is to restore all truths and ministries that were lost during that thousand-year dark period, which removed most every New Testament truth to a dead, formal, ritualistic situation and no life, no power, no demonstration. But Martin Luther received the revelation that you're saved by faith in the accomplished work of Christ, and he wrote 95 arguments against all the dead works of the Catholic Church, of all the, uh, all the things that were, that you tried to earn it by grace, or you saved through faith, that's not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, not of any religious works. So he started teaching that eventually, and then he started teaching even the thing that really got him in trouble with the Catholic Church, he started teaching the priesthood of the believers. Mm -hmm. You know what he said? He said, I'm going to make every believer as knowledgeable of the Word of God as the Pope himself. Mm -hmm. No wonder they kicked him out of the church, oh, you know. <laughs> and, and then he said, and then he said, everybody's got direct access to God. Well, that would done away with the fatherhood and the priests. And I mean, I mean, he was about to disrupt their whole program. So they called him a heretic, cast him out. Yeah. And from that started uh, the Lutheran church. And then, and then and John went to uh, uh, Scotland. And from that came the Presbyterian church. And Kramer went to England. And that came the Church of England. And so we have three major churches started from that. And then we had restoration, restoration after that. And then 1600, we had the Anabaptist movement, and all your Baptist churches sprung up from that time. And then in 1700, we had the Holiness movement, and John Wesley, and the Holiness, and Nazarenes, and all the Church of God, all those holiness churches, God sanctified the church. Then 1800, we had the Divine Healing Movement, and John, <clears throat> and we found that with that Presbyterian brother got a revelation that he was, the, the doctor said, you're going to die in three months. He said, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die for the Word of God. He started studying the Word of God and discovered healing is in the atonement, same as forgiveness Amen. of sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, he started preaching that, and, and, and it, it's yeah. miracle signs and wonders took place all over the world. And from that came your Missionary Christian Alliance Church. And then God still wasn't through. He didn't rapture the church out yet. Uh, then in 1900, we had the Pentecostal movement, and God restored the big boy of the Holy Spirit like he gave on the Pentecost with your spirit language with all the power and the purpose of it. And from that came all your 
about the Assembly of God, Church of God, Pentecostal Holiness, and um, Foursquare, and about 25 other denominations of Pentecost. And then, but God didn't rapture the church out then. But then in 1948, we had another restoration movement that taught that the apostles and prophets were still in the church. We needed all five to accomplish God's purpose and His work. And then we had the charismatic renewal in the 60s. And then we had the faith movement in the 70s. Then the prophetic apostolic in the 80s and 90s. And then in 2007, the saints movement. Then 2008, we had the great, the third and final church reformation wow. began. Amen. 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 Amen